What happened to Tracy Edwards? If you're like me and you've been binge watching Monster, you may have celebrated Tracy Edwards as the hero who brought down Jeffrey Dahmer and his cannibalistic practices. However, the harsh reality of the aftermath of the Tracy Edwards story is that the once celebrated hero eventually turned into the villain. Let's discuss it. Quick note, when you download Japeka and you tap on the augmented reality tab and you can find any one of my drawings on the internet and you scan it with your phone, an augmented reality art experience from that drawing that you scan will come to life in your living room and you can explore the art and listen to the story that inspired it. Download Japeka on the App Store or Google Play today. So Monster has become Netflix's biggest show. It's quite addictive and a bit controversial. It was rejected by members of the LGBT community who consume Netflix's content because it quote unquote displayed them in a negative light. However, it still went on to become Netflix's biggest show. And the creators of the show didn't really wanna talk about what Jeffrey Dahmer did specifically because there certainly was not enough gore to show how he drilled holes into his victim's head and injected the brains with hot water or acid in order to create zombies. They never showed how he dismembered his victims. The focus of the show was not about that. The focus of the show was to tell the story of the victims whose names have been lost to history and put faces on them. Tracy Edwards certainly would have become one of those dismembered victims and only narrowly escaped that fate. He agreed to come home to Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment at the infamous number 213 to take pictures in exchange for money. Once inside of the apartment, Dahmer slapped handcuffs on him and attempted to cuff his other hand and instead used the other end of the handcuff to lead Edwards into a room where they watched the movie The Exorcist together. Edwards states that Dahmer would begin chanting under his breath before asking to listen to his heart. And when he asked Dahmer why he wanted to listen to his heart, Dahmer told him, because I'm going to eat it. Frightened, Edwards managed to get one of Jeffrey Dahmer's knives and hide it under the bed and pretended like he was participating in the photo shoot. Noticing that one of his knives was missing, Dahmer became a little suspicious and became less aggressive with Edwards because he thought he may have had the other knife. They began taking the pictures before Tracy asked Dahmer to finish the shoot in the living room because the bedroom was too hot. Dahmer agreed, and as they walked into the living room, Tracy Edwards punched Dahmer. He punched him so hard, Dahmer fell to the ground and Edwards escaped the apartment. He ran down the street and contacted police and told them that Jeffrey Dahmer had tried to kill him. He almost went to jail because they didn't believe his story. It wasn't until they figured out they couldn't get the handcuff off that they followed him back to Dahmer's apartment to get the other key. And once inside of Dahmer's apartment, they discovered a gruesome scene. Severed heads, photographs of corpses in varying positions, a vat with dissolving corpses sitting in acid, a corpse with maggots coming from the top of the head, and two full skeletons. In addition to several body parts wrapped up inside of his freezer, it became one of the biggest stories of the early 90s, and it brought closure to families who had reported their loved ones as missing to find out what had really happened. Of course, many of the victims did not have families and were never reported missing, and the only way that they were identified is because Dahmer kept their identification cards. Tracy Edwards provided emotional testimony that eventually sealed the fate of Jeffrey Dahmer. As gruesome as his crimes were, there was no death penalty in the state of Wisconsin, so he was sentenced to life in prison. Once Dahmer made it to prison, there were two attempts on his life. One from Osvaldo Dorothy, who attempted to slice Jeffrey Dahmer's throat, but was unsuccessful. But in the end, inmate Christopher Scarver was ordered to clean a room with both Jeffrey Dahmer and another killer named Jesse Anderson. 
he beat both of the men to death once the officers left them alone because Jesse Anderson had killed his wife and tried to frame young black men and Dahmer's victims were predominantly black. Now, I'm old enough to remember when this happened. That was celebrated. The, the fact that not only Jeffrey Dahmer was killed, but the fact that he was killed by a black man was widely celebrated, okay? I'm surprised at how many people did not know about Jeffrey Dahmer. And as a child, my mother made me and my brothers watch the first Jeffrey Dahmer movie that came out in the early 90s. And, you know, as an elementary school student, I knew about Jeffrey Dahmer and I knew what he had done and I knew that his victims were predominantly black. I remember the 90s very well and I remember Tracy Edwards was celebrated along with Christopher Scarver. However, it was the 90s and Jeffrey Dahmer was allowed to go on a press tour while in prison and not much press was given to Scarver or Tracy Edwards. As a result, they never really became folk heroes or celebrated in pop culture. So what happened to Tracy Edwards after this American horror story? Well, he lived the life of a grifter. He became a homeless man and he traveled from shelter to shelter. He became a drug addict and he was back and forth in jail for multiple drug crimes. He was on the streets from 2002 to 2011, bouncing around from homeless shelter to homeless shelter. In 2011, he was living in a homeless encampment near the Milwaukee River when he and a man named Timothy Carr were seen throwing another man by the name of Johnny Jordan over a bridge into the water. The fall did not kill Johnny Jordan, but he drowned in the river. And uh, Tracy Edwards was locked up for killing that man. He was locked up for killing him. And the other uh, defendant was actually charged with a lesser crime, which leads me to believe that Tracy Edwards might have been the primary aggressor in that situation. It may have actually been his plan to kill that man. However, I do believe that his role in bringing down Jeffrey Dahmer may have saved him from dying in prison because he was only given a year and a half for that murder. Nobody knows why. Um, his charges were downgraded and he was sent to serve a year and a half in prison for throwing a man to his death over a bridge. After that, nobody's seen a trace of him. And I'm sure nowadays, journalists, uh, both independent and corporate, are trying to track him down. Nobody's seen him since his release from prison. Nobody even knows if he's still alive. He's obviously a father because one of his charges that kept him in and out of the system was failure to pay child support. I'm sure the hunt is on to get his views on the hit Netflix series and to further discuss how did uh, his encounters with Jeffrey Dahmer change him, obviously for the worse, but today he's one of the most talked about topics and nobody knows where he is. And as far as his co-defendant Timothy Carr, his skeletal remains were found in a homeless encampment on the Oak Leaf Trail in Milwaukee in 2019. Skeletal remains, which means he died in the woods and nobody knew for quite some time. Could that have been the same fate for Tracy Edwards? The world may never know. That's the breakdown on Tracy Edwards for all of the true crime fanatics and everybody who became extremely curious after watching the Netflix series. I'm sure we'll all be keeping our eyes on it and hoping that he pops up soon so that we can get more insight into the man who helped bring us one of the most horrifying American horror stories in American history. Till next time.